It's not about WNC. It's not about me. It's not about my film. It's about all of us. It's the total sum. You want to do a really great independent film, guess what? Shooting it all in Asheville probably isn't going to make it that great. But what if I can help you out? You can shoot part of it in New York, part of it in New Orleans, part of it here in Asheville. Does that improve your final product? Yeah. Is it going to cost you something? Maybe, maybe not. But like this this selfish like attitude that independent filmmakers seem to have is driving us up the wall. And this group, we decided to talk to this group first because it's one of the only groups that I have seen last. Nobody shows up, four of us show up today. Next month, there might be 15 people. Nobody comes for three months, suddenly I'll come in here and there'll be 30 people one night. You know, it doesn't make sense. I don't know why. But this is the only group that does that. I've been here six years now. I try to join it with every group. And I hear, I constantly hear, well, let's get a writing co-op, or I'm not giving you crap. No, I know I'm almost quoting you sometimes. I really am not trying to give you shit, but it's just shit that I hear from a lot of people. No, because you're expressing a lot of what I've been feeling. And Bloom's got a writing co-op. I know you've got a writing group that used to meet at the lab or something, right? There's other, there's other stuff already happening. And my, my point is, we need to stop trying to create new stuff. Stop reinventing the wheel. Join up. You want to be a writer, you want to be a director, you might have to go work as a grip on somebody else's film. You might have to do it on 15 different films. There are people here right now also who are slowly getting the idea, like, you know what, maybe there is something to North Carolina. Maybe there is something to independent film. And they're coming into this area and they're looking around going, is the support here? If I showed up and actually started telling people what I'm doing here, would enough people show up that I could actually support a real film? And there's all sorts of people we're talking to that like, I'd love to just tell you guys about, but we can't. That's also part of the business. I also see a lot of independent filmmakers get halfway into a project when they start showing everybody everything. Da, 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 da. That we do need to come together and we need to keep it to ourselves. And so you make something great, stop talking to people. Stop telling people that you're the next, you know, Cohen brothers when you haven't made anything. And there's only one of them. And there's one of you. And, yeah, <laughs> and, you're, and you're doing a 12-minute film about your puppy and how it choked on a lima bean. <laughs> this doesn't help. Like, this doesn't make you the Cohen brothers. And all these people, the other thing that's driving me nuts is people look at, the like, same thing with Hollywood, but all these directors. Hitchcock did not become Hitchcock overnight. Hitchcock did hundreds of films as a set designer. Then he started directing. He did hundreds of films that we, most of us will never get to see. Then he became Hitchcock. Then he did some films in London and England, and then he came to the U.S., and he became Hitchcock. These people don't just sp spawn up overnight. And so I meet these people who are like, oh, I'm a big director. I'm like, man, if you're not practicing, if you're not doing the art, if you're not working at it, you are not a director. The person who goes and works for free as a grip on 15 films in a year is more of a director than me than anybody else because they're actually working towards the goal of really becoming a director. And so basically, what Sam and I have been talking about is like, we're, we're willing to like, I want to give talks. I will fucking rant like this to anybody who's willing to listen. But we can't just do it by ourselves. I had the same rant with my husband who gave me a hard time about. Well, he gave me a hard time about your film and then the video. But I thought, hang on, the video that's the video. But he said, you know, can't wait to take off work again so you can go work for free. Yeah. I said, hey, at least you're not paying tuition somewhere. I'm thinking of this as tuition. And uh, this is what I'm doing. This is what I want to do. And, you know, it's not like nine to five every day. It's, it's a wham, bam, two to three week deal where I need your cooperation and I want to do it. And then you can relax for a while. And then we're done. And deferred, like, you know, and we actually, what's funny is like there, it, things got complicated when Sam and I got together and decided to do the next film. And it really complicated ringside movies legally for me on paper, which is why there are people that like, I owe you some money just for DAS stuff. And part of the reason, but seriously, the, the reason those things haven't happened yet is a complication of paperwork. Not that it doesn't get done. You know what I mean? There's more to it when you're doing it right, unfortunately, than being able to just hand somebody the check and say it's done. And it's a certain amount of faith required on all of us to believe the person you're talking to that they will follow through. And I think that's one of the reasons Sam was willing to do anything with me ever, is when we did Straw Dogs In, I spent a year by myself cutting it together. Nobody was interested anymore. We kind of got it shot, and everybody broke off, and nobody wanted to help. Once I open my mouth, once you hear me talking about a project, it will be done. That's it. This other attitude, we'll talk about projects, 15 projects, and maybe we'll pick one, it can't. We're just hurting ourselves. 
once you hear me say that we're doing another reason I we did the voting and the reason we didn't start telling everybody what we're doing right away is until I know what we're doing and I know that it's going to happen, we're not going to tell you. We're talking to a couple different names, which one of them is doing something pretty shady, and it's a little weird. Um, and once we're done with him, if he does not agree to participate, that's a great story, and we'll tell everybody about it. But in the meantime, we're going to keep it to ourselves and hope that I hope we don't have to blackmail, but hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully they'll agree to do it out of good faith, and that will help spur some more stuff. But I don't care. I don't care if my next film has a name or not. I don't care if the entire world sees it. All I care about is that we try to pull some kind of profit. We try to pull some kind of money off of that one in distribution, because that means somebody has seen it. It means that when we go to talk to somebody else about another project, they have a reason to trust us. With Ringside Rosary, we're not just going to sit on it. You're going to see it in festivals. And if it doesn't go to the festivals we want, you're going to see it in some distribution. I've got these Japanese people all excited because there's a white woman in it that takes her clothes off in two seconds. Apparently that's all you need to sell a movie in Japan. <laughs> wow, by the way. <laughs> it takes a lot of work, though. I, we literally we need a staff. We need people to help. Running down all this distribution, we started with a list of over a thousand distribution companies. We have gone through those, narrowed it down by who's actually con contactable. So out of those groups, how many of them only work with $500 million films? If you're not interested, they can't help us. Out of those, how many of them, da 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 da. And then we break that list down, and we keep working it, we keep honing it on. Same thing with agents, same thing with actors, same thing with other studios. And it's not some little small, if we do one film, it'll solve all our problems issue, man. This is a huge issue. If we want to ever compete with Hollywood, you have to cut Hollywood out. We have to get that link to distribution. We have to be able to make the films here, complete them, and get them to the distribution and get them seen. Otherwise, you're going to make one film, Hollywood's going to come call on your door, you're going to get excited, and you're going to book. And you're going to say, well, fuck the East Coast. Hollywood's going to call me up, and I get to make, you know, some crappy $400 million movie now. Yay! Yeah, with Will Ferrell. Oh <laughs> so, if that's all anybody's interested in, we're not talking to you. You know, if all people are interested in their own career and they're hoping to break into Hollywood, we're not talking about you. We're talking about the people who want to take advantage of all the technology boom, of all the access to media, of all this stuff, Netflix, da 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 I've talked to people, well, I don't want to do a film unless it's shot on film. Why? Who the hell were you born? You know what I mean? Like, my whole life, yes, I've been watching films, but since I was little, has anyone I know been at home with a film camera? No, they've had VHS, and then after VHS, we moved on. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't have $500 million, why would you spend any time or money on novel movies that Hollywood has decided is really important, like film stock? It doesn't make sense. Or 3D. Or any of this other bull crap. Paying an assistant director, you know, 13, 12% of your entire budget. That's retarded. You know what I mean? Don't pay any of them. You know, I don't get paid for my films. I lost my job. That's the truth of it. I lost my job on the last film and basically almost became homeless. If it wasn't for calling in my favors, completing the project, doing the work, and saying, screw my job, I wouldn't have met, or I already knew Sam, but I wouldn't have impressed Sam enough that he would have invested in my next film. That investors would come to me and say, it's worthwhile putting our money into you so you don't have to cook anymore, Jack. I'm living on, like, nothing, and that's fine. But I can get more done now. So why is it that I'm putting out emails and I'm putting out uh, YouTube videos and we're doing interviews with URTV and we're talking to people saying, I'm, f I'm free, man, hit me. you got an idea. If you're not going to do it, I'll put the 14 hours in a day to work on it. Nobody's calling. Nobody's emailing us. Nobody's responding. Nobody watches URTV. And this is true. But we put yeah, it up on YouTube that's sad. and we put it up on our homepage. So what's going on? We need more favors. We need more people to call them in. We need everybody to get together and work together. We need some stories in the newspapers. We gotta get the media interested. We, you can't spend your whole life trying to spend money on advertising. You need to be so interesting so interesting and so revolutionary that advertising comes to you. That the newspapers want to call you up and interview you and put you on the front page of the story or WLOS or whatever. And that might be as small as just one person knowing somebody who works at the station or wherever and going, this is a good story, you should go talk to them. 
Those are small little favors. And I talk to people all the time who are like scared of losing their favors. What are you holding on to these favors for? What are you going to do with them if not use them for a good cause to actually get something done? I don't want to use my I don't want to use up my favors until I know your project's real or substantial. Well, how are any independent film projects ever going to be substantial or real if we all don't get together and use our favors and call up our friends and like get together and like really become a community? The co-op, I would love to do some kind of co-op. I have no interest in an Asheville film co-op. I have no interest in a North Carolina film co-op. I want to do an independent film co-op, period. East Coast, Texas, I don't care. Why does it matter where you're from? There are people in Durham, there's people in St. Salem. So you can call somebody in Canada in a co-op, independent film co-op, and get there. Get, get them to work with you, give you a free place to stay so you can go shoot your film there. I have friends and family in Honduras and New York and Mexico and all these places. So we all have Japan. You start thinking about it, mm-hmm. and what if it's just one scene? Well, then you don't need everybody, man. You grab your director, you grab your actor, you get your cameras with your DP, and you go down to wherever, shoot your one scene, and let me tell you something, that makes you stand out. You go to these film festivals, they shot in their hometown, it's about their hometown, and it's their friends, and you look like everybody else. You show up with a film, um, uh, Lonely Place to Die, blew everybody's mind at the action festival. There was no, there's nothing about that film that said small independent film with some friends getting together to shoot something. And that's pretty much what it was. When I started talking to those guys, they were like, we just had an idea, and we pitched it to these people, and they gave us you know, a little bit of money, and with that little bit of money, we were able to do this. And they just had a unique idea, and they worked really hard at it, and it's really good. It's really, really good. And it won the festival. And it won the festival. It won everybody. Like, basically just won everybody who watched it. And they were like, dear God, how did you do this with the amount of money you had? Or Period. How did you do it? Period. It's a great movie. So... That's kind of where we're at right now. And to be honest, in the past six years that I've been in Nashville, I, I keep a lot to myself. I had always worked on the impression, like a lot of other people, that if you're an independent filmmaker, you got to keep it to yourself. You have to pull all the favors you can, pull the money you can, and equipment you get, and keep it to yourself. You know anybody with a camera? No, go no away! <laughs> <laughs> because what if they take my equipment? What if I need it and they already have it? Blah, 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 blah. It has gotten us nowhere. It's gotten nowhere. It's when I came out with Ringside Rosary and actually told people about it and got, you know, just started talking more. Suddenly, we had, we, our total crew list was like 58 people. And I think we paid, and it was just from talking. It was just from me stop being shy. So, our new policy is we're talking, and we kind of given up on it if we offend anybody. Um, <laughs> Because, to be honest, I think if we offend you, then you're an enemy of, of independent film. You're only part of the group that's dragging it down and keeping it back. If you're only worried about your own little project and your own little world, then that's all you'll ever be worried about. We really, like... I I can only say so much. I'm talking to a guy that I'm trying to just get in on his crew, period. He's got Ron Howard interested in a film he's going to shoot here, in the area. But does he have a guarantee that it's going to get distributed? No, he's in the same boat as all of us. He's spending shit way more money than I, you know, heard of one person ever spending on a film that they wanted to do. And Ron, he knows Ron Howard. Ron Howard basically like, yeah, if you, if you do that, and it's good, and you complete it, and you get it to me, okay, then I'll get it distributed for you. It's so not he, the guy with the um, tail. No. Yeah. So I'm not these, there's the amount of people I'm running into who are doing things so quietly in this area are ridiculous, and it's and I keep saying to them, why are you being so quiet? Well, because I don't need every schmuck in Asheville calling me up who goes, I have a production company, and I give anybody shit because this is who I've been for six years. But I have a production company, but they don't have any equipment, or they don't know they have they just bought the equipment, they don't really know how to use it or whatever. He doesn't need all that. You know, he keeps saying, he's like, I want a small crew of people actually know what they're doing, who aren't interested in getting paid, because they understand if we can take this straight to studios to be distributed, you will get paid later. And that the film could create a snowball for more films in the area. 